Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Board City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. Without further ado, I bring to you Finnish guitar phenom. Is that right? Is that how you pronounce your name? <laughs> that was, was a very good try. It's uh, Erja Lutinen. Area? Some people say Erja or Area, but Erja it's pronounced in Finnish. Uh, and Lutinen is very typical Finnish surname. But but I know it always it's it's funny when people try to say that abroad. But but it's cute. It's cute. Area Lutinen. Lutinen. Yes. Okay, so it's, it's 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 a bit of a tongue twister. But you don't really have to speak. You speak with your guitar playing, and I found you on YouTube. And I was more than impressed, and I should have written down the song, but um, I should have written down the song. But anyways, I watch a lot of your videos, and your guitar playing is amazing, and you're a blues guitar player, uh, I think primarily, and you're a very accomplished slide player. So just tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into playing blues, because before I was doing the, going to do the interview, I was thinking, well, blues is is, is native to the United States. And so how did you get incorporate blues music um, in Scandinavia from there? I know, I get, yeah, I've, I've been asked that many times. Well, um, uh, I was born in Kuopio in Finland. It's kind of in the eastern part of Finland. And um, both of my parents, they are very, very musical. Actually, I have the, their pictures here. I was just cleaning the house. So that's my mom and that's my dad. Wow. You know? and, and they they had a... Uh, a band since 1960s and you know they met in a band and boom and and uh <laughs> and then you came along <laughs> and then me and my brothers came along but but um so when i was a kid i was i was watching them playing and and uh going to shows and later on when i was around 15 years old i joined them joined their wow. band but before that i had been going to conservatory to play violin so I was first classically educated, but when I became a teenager, I was searching for something else. I wanted to do something else. I, I wanted to rock, you know, and, uh, and somehow electric guitar started to fascinate me. So I picked up my father's guitar and started to learn on my own. And uh, because I had done those violin lessons, I went to orchestra and a theory lesson lessons so I could exploit all of that already to my guitar playing mm -hmm. and uh so i i went to library and and i borrowed music sheets music notations c cassettes back then we had c cassettes and, is that um is that similar to what we call a tablature uh, with with c cassettes um because there's you can read music with notations in the staff and the, the notes no, but if you can't read music it's tablature it has the the numbers on the strings no i mean um uh, c cassette was before cds came in oh no, well, cassettes. Cassettes. Yeah, yeah, yes yes we said c -cassettes. C -cassettes. okay yes yeah, so so you know back those days yeah i remember it was on streaming platforms nowadays it's easy if you want to hear a song you just go and stream it but yeah when I started to play guitar, I had to find the music and that was part of the education that it, it wasn't easy. You wanted to learn some certain piece. You had to really search for that album or and so on. But, but I remember it was fascinating. I, and I was playing songs from Led Zeppelin and and learning tunes from Ingi Malmsten and... Um, oh, Ingi. <laughs> And all the loving the yeah, all the stuff and and yeah that's that's the way my guitar playing started and and later on when I went to different music schools conservatories to uh, to uh, study music and I've been studying music in in Sweden in in uh, Malmö music music uh, school and. Uh, in Denmark, Copenhagen Ruth Music Music School, if I remember the correct the name, and also I had a chance to study in Los Angeles Musicians Institute in two thousand and four. Oh, wow. Yes, I got uh, like a scholarship there. And wow, isn't it so? So, did you um, um when you were in L.A. Was there anybody in your class that has become as famous as you? 
any about any notable people that you studied with or taught you? Good question. Because, well, it was quite a long time ago and it was like you had different classes. I went to different guitar lessons like, oh gosh, I cannot remember all the name of the teachers, but but uh, one of the lessons was uh, held by Scott Henderson and I'm really a big fan of his music. And Right, right. I know, I, I've heard of him. Guitar player, rock, rock, jazz, a bit jazzy as well, but yeah. I would say more progressive on rock guitar player and just amazing and he actually just visited Finland but I, I was on my own show so I couldn't see him play and um, what else and then my singing coach was Masta Edwards this amazing Master. soul singer and uh, also I went to lyric writing lessons by CJ Parker and uh, <clears throat> I remember we had uh, like a blues music history lessons also by Keith Wyatt so okay. amazing, amazing teachers back then. But students, yeah, there must have been, but I just, I, I don't know. I frankly don't know if there were anybody who's now really big. So when you're at the Music Institute, I'm starting to put the pieces together. You can go into a certain genre of music that you want to study. Is that correct? Yeah, there's like, a, there's a, I don't know how it's nowadays because this was 20 years ago. Oh, okay. uh, I just picked up the classes I wanted to go and uh, yeah it was nice I went to gospel choir and 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 lyric writing lessons and it was all really fascinating and besides it wasn't in Finland it's it was in the United States of America yeah, <laughs> yeah or you, you spent half the time at the beach and half the time in the classroom hey. right <laughs> so who, who were your influences when you decided that you wanted to pursue this as a career? <clears throat> well, um, I remember I got really excited about Coco Taylor. She was this amazing um, blues singer. She, from, if I remember correctly, she was from Chicago. At least that kind of a genre, Chicago mm -hmm. blues genre. Just amazing singer, Coco, Coco Taylor. Uh, then I was listening to Ray Charles and, and Bonnie Raid. Those three were per perhaps the, the biggest, biggest influences when it comes to root genre. But then right. of course, I was listening to a lot of different guitar players from, from Brian Setzer to Pat I Messi, love Brian Master. Setzer. I know, he kicks ass. He still does. And, he um, just joined. Uh, they just the Stray Cats just did a few shows recently. The first time, and I think it was the first time Brian played in about four years since like COVID and that stuff. It was just recently I saw that, but I was I want to ask you about one because I'm actually right on the border with with the United States. I live in Canada, but the border just right across the bridge is the United States. But there's a great Canadian guitar player. I'm wondering if you've heard of him, Colin James. Yes, I of course. Colin James, fantastic guitarist. And yeah. uh, I started, I've listened to his stuff since I was 20 years old or something. So, so yeah. you've been listening to him for the last 10 years. <laughs> All right. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so, I want to talk to you about this festival, and I am so impressed. Obviously, I'm impressed to talk to you because you're a great player. But I was looking at your tour list, and you're going to be heading to Byron Bay for the um, the Byron Bay Festival. And, I, and the, you're in a category with people like Jack Johnson, Ben Harper. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, explain um, what it's going to be like to play there. Have you played that festival before? No. And uh, this is first time I'm going to Australia ever in my life wow. so I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled and as now we're speaking actually I'm going out tonight so I'm tonight I'm expecting two flights uh the other one is 12 hours and the other one is only eight hours so it's gonna be a long way to Australia but I'm so excited as you said the lineup is crazy all these amazing bands playing there there for five days in a row and we get to do three shows of our own in there with my band and i've heard it's beautiful coast in the east oh, eastern yeah. coast of 
Australia, so it must be amazing, like just to be there and breathe the air. Are you bringing your surfboard? Well, if I can squeeze it into my little trolley. <laughs> <laughs> just take the but, strings off of one of your guitars. Yeah. <laughs> well, you actually, I was that. thinking I should probably take the, uh, the what is the swim, swimming glasses, the, what do you got? And the oh, snorkel. snorkel. Yeah, because, you know, I've, I've been dive, diving. So oh, uh, okay. free diving. I, I, I did the course like over a decade ago and, and that was very exciting. But so I have these these things or still with me. So I was thinking maybe I can squeeze them into my guitar bag and go for well, swim. Or you can rent them. So your um, show is that beside your name, it says exclusive. What, what does that mean? Because not everybody in, on that um, list, including Elvis Costello, I mean, the, the list is so big. Um, what does it mean? Does it mean that you're playing three nights in a row? Uh, what it says? Exclusive. It says, it, let me just look at it. It says beside your name, exclusive. Uh, Jack Venson's exclusive. Here come the mummies exclusive, Jack Johnson exclusive. So I'm I'm gonna click on it. Okay. Um, well, it actually. You oh, tell yeah, me. Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> it's going to. So <laughs> it it's um. I don't know. It says Friday, Sunday, and Monday you're playing. Yeah. So um yeah, you might be in for a treat because it says exclusive. I don't know what that means. I thought that there was something maybe involving. Um, you're just playing alone, um, and there's no opener. Or how is how is your how is your um, how is your sets going to be handled? Maybe that looks explain it. I think it's if I, I checked on the schedule, and there is several bands playing on the same day with mm -hmm. us on the same stage. So it is like a festival lineup on on those three dates. But maybe it means that you know because we're doing three shows. I don't know. I think I that's know. what it is. No. I think that's what it is because I think I checked a few of the other ones that weren't exclusive and it just showed a certain day they were playing. So it's right. maybe because you're playing three nights. Right. Three sets. So how many songs are going to be in each set? And um, what albums are you going to be covering? Uh, we'll be playing uh, songs from my previous two, three albums. Uh, well, we've released uh, Diamonds, on the road live album last October, which includes the latest the songs from my latest studio albums called "Waiting for the Daylight" and "Another World." So, um, yeah, it's gonna be a rocking set, I would say, rocking bluesy set with progressive sounds from it, north north of <laughs> Europe. It, it, I think the people in Australia are gonna be in for a treat hearing a Finnish guitar. And and here's another great thing. It's it's great to see so many females on the um in on in the in the um festival. I mean, there's probably I, just as many as males. I know it's it's wonderful. Things things have changed in 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 the last decade. I would say, like when I started to play guitar, there wasn't too many women playing guitar. But nowadays, we are everywhere. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even looking at it right now, and I'm more. I mean, Tom Jones is at this festival. Yeah, I supported Tom Tom twice. Wow, <laughs> that says a lot. Yeah, that was amazing. Have you um Have you ever played with Jack Johnson or Van Harper? No, no. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, I mean, I've been. I, I like Jack um, or Ben Harper, but I mean, Jack Johnson um, just, that's what I kind of, I grew up into kind of the hard rock, kind of like the white snake, that sort of Def Leppard. But I mean, I, I like classical, I like blues, but I mean, I like the college university kind of music that Jack Johnson, like the surfer kind of get just a guitar in his voice. So are you going to be checking out any of the shows? Um, is there any particular show that you want to make sure you don't miss? Well, I'd really like to see uh, Tedeschi Trucks band because mm -hmm. I've been listening their music since I was a youngster, and and uh, I think we are probably the same age. So it's it's kind of fascinating, and and I I'm a big fan of their their music. I've always been, and I I remember meeting Susan Tedeschi in 
in the festival where I was playing also, this was in 2006 and I got to have a little chat with her and she was super nice. And, and, and so Susan and Derek together, I think that they, they work so brilliantly, you know, yeah, they do. And, and traditional blues guitar and the voices. So it's beautiful. Right. Um, what, what, um, what do you bring to slide? When did you, um, incorporate that into your style was it right away when you started playing guitar that you got into slide playing because from what i understand you're one of the best female slide players in the world That's what they say <laughs> thank you well this is a funny story because i was i was studying music in the conservatory around age of 18 or something and i found a slide tube a bottleneck in the classroom and mm -hmm. it was still there after a couple of days so i thought i'm gonna just pick that up and and try what i can come with it and i instantly loved it so i started to practice it and and i and my guitar teacher back then um i asked if he could teach me some for the slide you know but he he said i'm not really like a slide guitar player so I'm gonna just uh, teach you some of the little things, but then you are you are on your own, <laughs> so to speak. Right. So I started to learn that on my own, and and uh, it kind of I remember it, how fast it the technique and everything developed. So I was taking quite big steps right away. So there, so there was something special for me in slide guitar. Mm. I instantly loved it, but at the beginning I was playing it in regular tunings so that's a bit different in but what i'm sorry in the in the regular tuning so like like oh, regular guitar. tuning was you didn't have yeah, um yeah like a yeah. guitar is usually it's just e e b g d a e right right but with slide you can it's tuned in an open tunings so right. when you pick pick a chord you get a um chord from each fret so it's right. gonna be I either minor chord or 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 major chord, and I usually have like open tunings in G or open D or open C, which is a dropped from D. Right, so, right. So that's a totally new new different world, and it's always fascinating to play slide guitar because I I never know what's gonna happen. It's because I wasn't thought. Uh, education education for the for the slide so i can right. learn play that on my own so it's similar to um playing your fretless guitar yeah you could say like that. um yeah. there's um guitar player i've interviewed a few times bumblefoot ron Thal, um and he plays um obviously he plays great guitar but he plays a fretless at times and so i can i play guitar so i can equate fretless with slide in the you don't press on anything really well with with fretless you know what i mean you're just some like violin going up mm. and down the neck but did you learn bad to the bone <laughs> that would well, have been I, one of the first i think i've i've fooled fooled around with that song somewhere oh okay <laughs> i'm sure i have i thought that would have been one of the first because when i first started playing guitar a lot of kids start playing guitar stairway to heaven is one of the first oh, ones yes. they learn right that was a huge one. I remember that I had that was seven seven pages of notation. Yeah, it was quite a bit. It was a long... Yeah. There's another great guitar player that lives in your side of the um, world. I've interviewed uh, Adrian Vandenberg. Okay. You might know him. He was in White Snake for decades, and then he had his own band, Vandenberg. Right, and right. He's also a, a painter. He lives in um, in Holland. Right. He lives in um, in um, in Shetty. But um, he's in, he's uh, actually touring again now. So um, I don't want to keep you much longer because I mean, do you have your travel pillow with you? Because that's the long flights. I'm gonna need melatonin and a good pillow and maybe a big glass of red wine. <laughs> yeah, but I'll knock you out for a little bit. Um, do you have um, any plans for, are you writing music for a new album coming up? Yes, I'm planning to uh, to write stuff. Well, after after this tour, I'm I'm starting to write. I've already written some, some of 
ideas and uh i'm hoping to go to studio by the end of this year but any chance thing, of a north american tour to follow that would be my dream but at the moment i don't have an agent there so so well I'm, you know uh, what when you're rubbing shoulders on the festival that's how you meet right <laughs> That's how you connect. Yes. So, I mean, talk to as many people as you can. And before I let you go, I have to bring this up to my viewers. They're going to be impressed uh, to know. Well, they probably have heard of you. But Carlos Santana said, I, what did he say about you? There's a, he, he, did you ever meet Carlos or? Yes, I did meet. I, I supported him in 2018 in, in, uh, in this, uh, park here in in Helsinki and uh he came to see my show and my set and asked me to join him on his backstage and wow. I had such a lovely time with him just listening to his um stories and and advices and and we were also listening some of his demos from his upcoming album. So that was it was amazing ex experience to me. And uh, yeah, he called me like uh, because obviously my name is Lutine. So probably he was trying to pronounce it like you were, but he said I, I call you Lightning, like Lightning Hopkins. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I wow. I mean, to get um, somebody like that to um, to say such kind words about you means a lot because, I yes. mean, you just can't throw around, you know, phrases about one of the best new talents and stuff to everybody. So I'm sure that it meant a lot to you. And yes. I'm sure that it's opened a lot of doors as, as well. When people hear about that, they give you a, a second look or listen. Excuse me. Yeah, I think... It I've had a lot of feedback after that show and people were genuinely proud that Carlos invited me on stage to play mm -hmm. with his band as well. So I got to be there, you know, with this amazing orchestra and with Cindy Blackman on drums. And yeah, yeah. It was a very amazing moment. And sometimes I think, did it happen? But you can just go YouTube. and Yeah. Over there, yep. you can have, check it on my area in an official YouTube channel as well. So we have it, have it there. So I was gonna, I, I was gonna ask you. So for people to go and and check out your music, buy your merch. Oh, speaking of this, I have to ask you this: your merch. You got male underwear. That's hilarious. <laughs> I whose idea was that? I don't know. Well, it's 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 a merchandise, you know. We have, you know have what? It's so unique. It is so unique. I think I thought that was great. I mean, I thought that was hilarious. I was looking through your website, which is a good website, by the way. So it's um, Erla Erla Lutinen. Lutinen .com. <laughs> Yes. Lutinen. I'll put a link, by the way. Don't worry. I'll Thank get you. the spelling right and everything, so people can check out your uh, music and merch. And the same with your YouTube channel. And then I'll find that video. I forget the name of the song. It's got like 2.5 million views. Black Ocean. Know. It must be Black Ocean. Yes. Oh, my God. I think That's you mentioned great. that. In that the was the one that got me hooked. I said, I got to contact yeah. this, this woman. She's just amazing. So um, what is the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Everybody subscribe to the channel as this great Finnish guitar player says. Make sure you check out her shows if you're in the area. Check out her website. And um, yeah, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.